All right, welcome to JT Gatoring. So this is going to be a quick overview. I talked backwater on the phone and we're testing props. Everything mud motor related has to be greasy. All right, uh, backwater got sent me some 9x4 and 9x5 prop. Um, that sounded a little weird. Sent me two props. One's a 9x4, one's a 9x5. 9x4 has a lower pitch than the 9x5. So in theory, the 9x5 should get me faster if my engine can spin it. So I'm going to put the 9x5 on there first because I strongly think that it will. And if my RPMs are low and I'm not, if the engine's not performing good, then I know that I can drop down to the 9x4. But I don't want to put the 9x4 on, reach the govern out with the RPMs, and then have to put the 9x5 on. I really think the 9x5 will work, so that's what I'm putting on. I should probably just cut this off, but... Just heavy, heavy prop. Alright, so this is a quick video update. Um, John Boat 1436 Loom Craft has wet lander on the bottom of it, has a stock 13 horsepower engine, has a little over 20 hours on it. Uh, backwater kit is on it right now. Uh, I talked to Backwater on the phone. Um, it was a good conversation, about 30 minutes long, had multiple questions. I'll have all of that written in an article on the website. It'll also be down in the description, probably link it up in the card up there. Um, that way I can get everything down, written down, and you can always uh, see it whenever you want to. You don't have to try to watch through a video and figure out at what point it was. So, called him. He sent a new tiller handle with the new throttle. The new throttle, I do like it a lot better than the other one, but I'm still getting a lot of vibration and it's still rough on the hands. Um, he sent two props, a 9x4 and a 9x5. The 9x5 has more pitch to it, the 9x4 has less pitch than the 9x5. The one that gets sent with the kit is an 8x4. So the 9x4 is the next step up, and the next step up from the 9x4 is the 9x5. I should probably be able to run the 9x5 with this boat empty. Right now I have a little bit of an extra load. The 9x5 is too much, so I'm going to have to test out the 9x4 and see what speeds I get with that. I just ran the 8x4, governed out, still going 15 miles an hour. So just to give you the stats for that, uh, 9x5 prop idling speed was 3 miles an hour at 1000 RPMs, which is bogging normally. I normally idle around 1200 with a standard prop. And um, max speed was 14 miles an hour with this load. and then. RPMs that were reached for 14 miles per hour were 3,200 to 3,300 RPMs, which is on uh, lower than I want. So I'm going to switch it out. Um, hole shot, it was with the ride plate, the surface tracer, you don't really get a, a good 
a whole shot, I guess, not compared to a tie long tail at least. Um, so whole shot, I'm not really going to count for this backwater because you really don't have too much of a whole shot. It's pretty slow getting up, getting up on plane at least. So I'm going to change out the prop and do that. That way the wind won't blow me into the shoreline. We'll see how good that holds. Alright, so I just got the 8x4 prop on. That anchor pole is still holding. A little bit of wind, I think it's like 8 miles an hour right now. A little bit of chop on the water. Um, and it's up to the handle and it's pretty angled and it's holding great so I really like that uh, 9 by 5 prop is too much for right now with what's in the boat so I'm switching back to the 8 by 4 I'm going to slide this cooler back more and this is just the new thing I'm going to try out having this big cooler in the boat I don't know if I'm going to like it or not I'm gonna try sitting on it and then I'm gonna try just facing it forward. Um, this is the first time it's on the boat, so first time I'm playing with it. around 11.50. We are going to be running into the wind. Even with the 9x5, there's still a lot of vibration. The vibration change is, there's no change at all. So, um, it may be the engine. Um, it's probably not the prop since it's two props. 
that both vibrate a lot. It's probably just the engine, I guess. Um, you guys saw the speed of what I got there. Um, just to let you know, a lot of, uh, you can change your speed varying a lot by uh, distribution in the boat, your weight distribution. Um, you try to put as much on the back as you can with it still playing out and riding good. If you put too much weight in the front, then that bow is going to sink down and you're going to plow through the water. So try to keep it all in the center of the boat, uh, midship, if not a little bit further back in the boat so that way you ride further on the transom, you ride further on the rake of the boat where it's flat and you're grabbing less water, less friction, uh, get your speed up a little more. So I don't know how much this weighs, but that's the extra weight in the boat. Uh, still was uh, governing out on the engine, hitting 3,800 RPMs. Um, still going 15 miles an hour from what I saw. And um, still handles really hard. With the weight that, the extra weight that's in the boat, I'm not gonna go mudding it today. I also have a screw on, the, one of the bolts on the transom plate is loose and it's sticking out about a quarter, half inch from the transom, so I don't know how that got loose or what happened there. I'm probably gonna have to rebuild this transom in the winter time, so if you're interested in that, uh, look for that sometime in the winter time when it starts to cool down in Florida, because right now it ain't cool. So I'm gonna finish drifting into the weeds. I'm gonna get the trolling motor going and see if there are any tilapia that I can easily see. And I brought the bow, and I wanna try to catch them with hook and line, see if I can get a lure on them. So that's what I'm going to play with for the rest of the day. I'm going to run that motor too, just to play around with it and um, finish having a great day. So if you're interested in that, you'll see that video coming up. And uh, thank you for watching. This is JT Gator.